If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we're going to be addressing a topic from my last podcast where um, I had an interview with Marty, good friend of mine, by the way, very smart guy. But the question we're going to be addressing is, can Neo really compete with NVIDIA in the chip space? I'm here to keep it objective. I'm here to tell um, my truth, my opinion, what I think, give my thoughts and be realistic. Keep in mind, I haven't shared this on the channel, but I do work for a major data center manufacturer where we sell things like servers, storage, networking, GPUs, chips, processors um, from major vendors from NVIDIA, Intel, uh, Qualcomm, all these things. So I'm very knowledgeable in this space and I think it'll be valuable for me to share my thoughts on this subject. And hopefully you guys can take some value away from this video as well. Anyways, before we get into the video, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell icon and leave a comment down below. All that engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel. One more call out that I want to make is that when it comes to the technical side of things as far as computing or processing power, those are things that I understand. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into today's episode. In our last uh, episode, I had a great conversation with Marty where we discussed Neo's entry into the chip space with their Shenji NX9031 autonomous driving chip. Neo, again, we could do a whole other episode. Neo is is uh, is right now in the final phases of their own chip, which they claim is. Tw and by the way, don't confuse. Um, a, a a chip, a digital chip, uh, with a GPU, uh, with a graphics processor unit. It's what they run the data centers on and what they run AI on. It's different. The chips that they're talking about that Neo is putting in the car has to do with automotive functionality. Does not have to. It doesn't have to do with. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to do with guidance and any type of level of autonomy. It has to do with you still have to turn on the windshield wipers. You still have to. Uh, you still have to uh, do the steering, engine control. There's a lot of things that the computers have to do in an EV besides guidance, turning the wheels. Just to get the wheels to turn is going to take a, 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 a is going to take a, a, an instruction set and a device that doesn't have to do with the guidance. The guidance tells it what to do. So um, Neo is gone ahead and just doing their own chips. And once their, their chips, if their chips get proven, my, I would say that they'll be, they, they will be for sale to, to any and every um, EV company that wants to use them and, and program them themselves. They'll do their own firmware. What you do know? you say to people who, um, cause this is an opinion that's out there that Neo should focus on their core competencies and leave the chip manufacturing to companies like NVIDIA, nope. companies nope. like so the whole trick, the whole trick, and the whole trick in Neo is they control almost all of their supply chain. Um, their their batteries. They again, you're not talking about customer, um, customer sales, customer relationships. The Chinese call them partnerships, right. and they they one hand washes the other. The the battery that that very well could end up in a Tesla or in or in a GM product uh, was developed. It's the semi-solid state battery right now, the battery that was developed by Neo and will Green Lion. And CATL is going to manufacture it because they could, and that's what I'm talking about, licensing. I would, I would, I would imagine that being Neo was the first company to get out, get it out on the road and test it for a thousand kilometers uh, was, uh, it is, is going to have their is going to get uh, a royalty on every sale. 
It, it, the, the battery wouldn't be here without Neon. It wouldn't be here without We Lion. And who put up the money? And who who calls it losses? You know, the the stock the stock market calls it a loss. I call it putting your hands in every other competitor's pocket. That's what they're doing. You're not seeing it now. You'll see it next year. You know, you're going to see it. You know, Neil getting partners for uh, bat, uh, for battery swapping and say, well, none of them are swapping. Well, some of them are. Some of them. Um, some of them are. They do have. They do have one company right now that is going to do swapping, but they're getting them on Neo's charging network. And that's right now the most profitable area of Neo. 32% of Neo charges are done by either a BYD or a Tesla. 30, 30, that's, that's, on, that's a third of them, right? The rest are Neo. But now you have all these partners who signed up, you know, if they're battery, they're battery swapping partners in the future. William Lee says it takes two years to go from to get a car prepared to to do swapping. That's that that's right out of his mouth, two years. So they could sign battery swapping today, but um, you can be sure that right now, Geely, I, I know for sure, Geely's um, and other car are able to get on the Neo, they have the Neo, char they have the Neo charging uh, um, app in, on their phone and they go to Neo charging. So they, it's a good business for them. And, and so of course, by, by Neo, by Neo building those, those charging facilities, not only swapping facilities, that's, capital their competitor doesn't have to spend so they it, it's a win-win situation they don't have to they don't have to invent the wheel uh their their customers get the advantage of thousands of charging stations and neo and and i would imagine the, the car maker both get a cut of of the profit and it's and you know that that that's your that those are your fuel stations of the future they're and in china they're the present Still having their own chip, do you think that they're taking on too many high risk bets? Because I work in the data center business and I know that there's a lot of uh, barriers to entry when it comes to getting into that space. NVIDIA is very dominant for the for the groundwork that they've laid over, se over several decades, a couple decades actually. Intel was always at the top. NVIDIA has their CUDA code that stops you know, people in the data center business from going over to, let's say, like, let me get an Intel GPU or let me get an AMD GPU. No, we want to stick with NVIDIA. It's a safe bet. So how do you see NEO overcoming like that challenge? Well, with, I, uh, um, again, uh, their, 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 pur their purpose is, 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 is an impressive automotive chip. They're not looking to dominate the chip industry. And while you mentioned Intel, just so you know, while I was at NEO, when you drive out of when you drive out drive out of Neo Neo's corporate headquarters, the first building you look straight ahead at is, is Intel's headquarters, right across the street. So Intel, while everybody's mocking them and the stocks taking an incredible beating, Intel is building two new plants in New York State that will give probably I would say two and a half three years from now will be. The talk of the town, the way in. And don't get me wrong, going. Intel is still a viable company, and it's not yeah. going anywhere. I actually... you know that. I, I just bought a new. I bought. I just bought a new workstation. It's got Intel in it. You know, mm -hmm. it's my preferred brand. I like AMD too, and I have, and it has an Nvidia card in it, by the way. But uh, I drove by the Nvidia. We drove by the Nvidia, uh, uh, in, in Nvidia complex, and it's it's huge. Uh, while we were test driving the Neo, they're they're out a in neighbor Mexico. Right up the street. A couple yeah. weeks ago, and they actually they built a plant out there um, as well. They're building plants everywhere right now because the AI opportunity is massive, and these companies that are ready for it have to position themselves to take advantage of it. And Intel is definitely still going to be prominent in this space. But when we Intel, look at Intel isn't like, going anywhere, and AMD isn't going anywhere, and there's and there's upstarts. There, there, yeah, we, we haven't come seen home. we haven't seen the last great chip maker in the U.S. or or in China. Uh, China, uh, Neo is worried. They they know what they went through getting uh, chips chips held them back in COVID. They couldn't do. They were limited. They they couldn't get parts, and and so and so could nobody. <laughs> Everybody had the same problem. And they're just saying, uh, Neo supply chain again is very unique. They invest in a lot of their supply chains. Marty made some solid points, but I think it's important to revisit this topic and give my opinion. So Neo Shenji chip impressive on paper right it's the world's first 
5 nanometer autonomous driving chip, boasting 32 cores and 50 billion transitors. It's a clear indication that NEO is serious about integrating more AI technology into their vehicles. And on top of it, they've already passed the tape out stage, which means mass production is on the horizon. But let's take a step back. I'm going to ask the question I asked in the interview again. Is it wise for NEO to enter a space dominated by NVIDIA, who's trailed by Intel, AMD, and other chip manufacturers, especially um, NVIDIA right now. They're the hot stock in the market, a company that's been perfecting their craft for multiple decades. NVIDIA is a giant in the chip industry, especially when it comes to autonomous driving. Their new drive Thor chip, which incorporates the Blackwell architecture, which is the same architecture that they're going to be having in their new series of GPUs, the B series, is set to redefine the driving experience. We're talking about a platform with four times the capacity of their already powerful Orin X chip, designed not just for autonomous driving functions, but also for AI capability, which by the way, are rapidly becoming massively important in the automotive industry. Now, Marty mentioned that the Shenji um, chip that NEO is going to be releasing focus mostly on driving capabilities like engine control, steering, and basic vehicle operation, which are crucial, no doubt. But here's where I differ. The Shenji chip is also incorporating AI, something that I feel like was overlooked. This means it's stepping into the same ring as NVIDIA's Drive Thor, which is not just a chip, but a comprehensive AI platform. Here's the thing. NVIDIA has a massive head start. They've already secured major contracts with players like BYD, Xpong, who are some of NEO's competitors, and even companies like Hyper and WeRide. These companies are building their next generation fleets around NVIDIA's technology, leveraging its scalability and AI capability. Let's talk about scale for a moment. NVIDIA has the infrastructure and resources to manufacture these chips at a scale that NEO simply cannot compete with at this point in time. That's just a fact. There's no debate on that. And let's be honest, NEO has a lot on its plate right now. So that's why I asked the question in the first place. They're producing batteries, developing mobile phones, and even developing their own and or manufacturing their own engines through their subsidiary XPT motor. I'm not saying that the Shenji chip won't be a good piece of uh, technology. It very well could be. And I actually think it is. But can it realistically do better than Nvidia's drive Thor. I'm skeptical. The market has already shown a strong preference for Nvidia's solutions in this space. And with their rapid adoption across industry, it's hard to see how Neo could outperform them or overtake them. Uh, in this uh, AI autonomous driving era. Let's not even forget about the financial implication. Entering the chip business is a huge bet and it's gonna be a significant financial drag for Neo, especially when they're competing against a company like Nvidia who's been perfecting their craft for years. So while I let Marty get his points across in the interview, I wanted to circle back and share my take. I think it's only responsible to question whether Neo can compete with NVIDIA in the chip space. The Shenji chip may be a very solid piece of technology, but expecting it to outperform, overtake, or surpass NVIDIA is a very tall ask and that needs to be understood, especially given everything else Neo is trying to juggle. I just named a few things, but we all know that there's plenty other things that uh, go into the business of what Neo is and what they're trying to accomplish. Remember that the opinions of my guests don't um, always reflect my own and they don't have to. That's the point of having a dialogue. If you watch Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp in the sports arena, they go back and forth and they don't always match on opinions. It's about um, them sharing their perspective and that makes for good banter, good dialogue. So I think it's just um, important to keep the conversation balanced. I'm a big fan of Neo. I've made that clear, but I also like to be realistic about the challenges that they face. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for tuning into the Courtside Financial Podcast. We'll be out next week with some more content. Um, make sure you leave your opinions on this subject down below. I want to hear uh, your guys' thoughts, your opinions on um, NVIDIA, NEO, and the chip space, who will be the winner, etc. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. Obi signing off, Courtside Financial Podcast. Hope everyone has a good rest of their weekend.